Cal Kellogg here, and it's time for another video podcast. I'm up at Sugar Pine Reservoir this morning in Northern California, and I'm fishing for rainbow trout, and I'm using one of the most overlooked rigs in trout fishing, and it is absolutely deadly. Let me talk a little bit about my rod and reel combo first, and then I'll share, share with you what I'm using. Um, I'm running with a seven foot three inch Cousins Tackle spinning rod. It's actually a bass rod. It's a little stouter than what you would consider a trout fishing rod and that's important because I'm throwing something pretty heavy on the end of it. Um, I've got that teamed with an Abu Garcia spinning reel. Um, it's loaded with eight pound test trilene big game line in the moss green color. I love that moss green line. So let's look at the end of this rig. Let me, uh, let me set the rod down here. What I'm throwing is a casting bubble teamed with a fly. And here's my, here's my fly. So here's how this rig works. Let's take a look at one of these bubbles before I show you the, the one I'm actually throwing. So the bubbles look like this. It's just a clear egg-shaped shape, plastic bubble. And it has a plastic spike in the center of it that you can, you can move it in and out, but you can't actually remove it from the bobber. And that spike, let me hold it up to the lens here. That spike, if you can see that, is hollow. So what it allows me to do is I can thread my fishing line through the spike. Once it's all rigged up, I put this underneath the water. I pull the pin out. I allow it to fill completely up with water. And then I slide the pin back into position, push it in there snugly. That traps the water inside. Now, some guys that I know that throw this rig, they like to leave a little air in it, keeps the bubble up on the surface. I do that sometimes, but what I really try to do is get every bit of air out of there, which is kind of tough to do sometimes. But if you, if you achieve that, what you end up with is a bubble that kind of has neutral buoyancy. You can, you can wake it along the surface, and that's a great presentation, but you can also let it sink down a bit and work it under the water. So let's look at my actual rig. One of the reasons that this is so attractive is, as you can imagine, when that thing's filled with water like this one is, it's just a little dot of air in there. It's heavy. I mean, that thing probably weighs an ounce. And, and paired with that spinning rod and a fairly light line, I can throw this thing a long way. So here's how I got it rigged up. My line is going through the bubble. And uh, so I put that on my line first. And uh, make sure you can see that. After I put on the bubble, I put on a, uh, a bead and I tie on a swivel. Then I've got about five feet of eight pound fluorocarbon leader material. And on the tip of the leader, you can use a lot of different things. This thing allows you, this rig allows you to throw something very light, very long distances. Um, the most common thing to use is a fly, like a woolly booger. And I've used a lot of different woolly boogers, woolly worms, muddler minnows, different streamers. Everything works at times. You can even go super small. You could go with a size like size 18 nymph up in the high mountains. That'll work too. It allows you to fish fly with a spinning rod and get it way out into the lake. What I've got on here today though is one of my, uh, I came on these a few years ago. They've become my favorite fly um, for teaming with a bubble. And it is a Max Lure. Um, it's basically their version of a woolly booger but uh, it has a smile blade attached to the front. And that's a, just a, it's just a little mylar blade. It spins with just the, the slightest movement in the water. So it takes all the effectiveness of the, you know, the marabou tailed woolly booger, and it gives it a little bit of flash. It gives it a little bit of vibration. And I've caught all kinds of fish on these. Um, well, throwing them from the shore with a, with a bubble, I, I also, if I'm having a tough time on a boat, sometimes I'll throw one of these behind a small dodger. And uh, I found them to be just absolutely deadly. And they come in a wide variety of colors. For lakes like this, this is a lake where the trout feed on bugs. I like to run with your, your olives, your browns. My personal all-time favorite, my confidence bait, is black. Um, they seem to like it. I, I just feel real confident when I'm throwing black. If you're out trolling in a lake and you want to try this, Max offers these things up in some, some super bright colors, white colors. If you're up at, say, Lake Shasta where the fish are feeding on small shad or something, don't hesitate to throw on a white one with a silver smile blade. The, the trout really respond well to that. So do spotted bass. I've caught panfish on these things. So it's just a real buggy, real subtle presentation. And uh, when you team it with that casting bubble, you can cover a ton of water from the bank. And uh, it's just a super fun way to fish. 
a couple points about the retrieve. Now you can cast it out and you can just slow roll it back in. That's effective. What I find is, I, I believe that the trout will follow that for long distances. Sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't. You can, you can vary the, the action of the fly a little bit by doing a stop and start retrieve or by twitching the rod tip a little bit. And what that does is it'll stop the blade from spinning, the fly will drop a little bit, it'll lift up, and a lot of times when I impart a little bit of action, I'll get hit right after that. And that kind of makes me think that the trout has been following it for a distance. So just mix it up. Um, I really like to wake it along the surface. Not make a lot of disturbance, but just get that bubble so it's just making a V wake. And uh, I really believe that that V wake, when the trout see it, they think it's another fish. And they come up just to kind of investigate. And then they see that fly kind of limping along and that blade kind of turning a little bit. They can feel that in their lateral line. And uh, you got a great chance of getting a strike from those fish. Final point, so now we're fishing the rig, rolling it along got to put yourself in a in a body position to set the hook the bites come fast and they'll spit that fly right out they're not going to hang on to it so as, as you're retrieving it along be in a position where you can really sweep on the rod and reel that'll set the hook then you got them but uh i i miss a lot of fish on this rig they'll come up and if you're not paying attention you'll just feel a tat tat and oh oh man i missed him he's gone so try to you know be in position, and when you set the hook, it's not a real snappy hook set. I really like to sweep the rod back, just load that line against the fish and reel, and just reel that hook right into their mouth. And I find when I do that, I have a much better better hookup ratio than, than using other methods like trying to set it real fast. But one of the keys is pay attention. Watch that bubble the whole time it's coming back to you. And again, sweep that hook into them and reel, 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 reel. And, uh, you got them. So I really encourage you to grab a couple of those bubbles. They're cheap. I think you get, I think I got three of them for a buck 99. Um, the flies are really inexpensive as well. And it is a super deadly presentation on rainbow trout, brown trout, panfish, and uh, other species as well. So give it a try. Um, I'm signing off. I'm going to go back to work here and see if I can't catch a fish. Um, I got about another hour to fish and I got to get back to the office and start typing up some stuff for our annual International Sportsman's Exposition uh, paper, which is coming up in an issue. So anyhow, you folks have a great day and I'll catch you next time. This is Kel Kellogg signing off.